Hey guys, how's it going? Sajin's Gamer Tag here. Um, so how was E3? Uh, I just finished watching um, the Treehouse footage from Nintendo for today, um, a little while ago. Um, watched it like all day today and all day yesterday. I missed out on a lot of um, first day stuff, but I'm pretty sure I got most of it. I saw the digital event, of course, and I went back and watched some some main stuff. Um, uh, the Treehouse session today sure made it seem like E3 was over. If it's not, I apologize, because this is meant to be a, um, a sort of general recap on things that I liked and didn't like. Things like that. Um, I have my gamepad here on the eShop uh, with all the trailers and stuff listed so I don't forget anything. I'm here in my game corner to talk about everything. So let's get to it. Um, Super Smash Brothers, first of all. Um, the new character announcements. Uh, first of all, if you didn't catch them, it was uh, Miis, Palutena from Kid Icarus, and Pac-Man are the three new characters. Um, nothing I'm incredibly excited about there, but... I have been around like the Miiverse communities and stuff enough to know that those three were constantly requested. And so it's good to see the community as a whole happy now because of that. And it's it's cool to see him in and with Pac-Man in now, especially we have like four of the most influential characters in gaming history. We have Mario, Sonic, Mega Man, and Pac-Man four legends can fight each other at once, and that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, in terms of, like, mechanic stuff for the game, like how the game works, there wasn't a whole lot of things I didn't already know. There was a little bit more on Smash Run but I f for the 3DS, but I felt that I already knew all of that, and that was just for kind of people that don't pay attention. But, um, and the 3DS version also got a delay, uh, it's not going to come out in summer anymore. It's going to come out in October. October 3rd, I believe, they said, was the U.S. release date. Um, a little disappointing. I was kind of looking forward to playing that this summer and all through the fall. Um, but uh, it, it makes a little more sense. Uh, the Wii U release date is still for the December area. Um, and so there isn't, like, a huge gap in between where you're wondering what the hell could they possibly be doing with the Wii U version that would take that long. So it's a little more reasonable. Um, alright, looking at the trailers here, we got a Splatoon, a brand new game. Um, I felt a little bit too big of a deal was being made out of it. Like, every Treehouse member was like, oh my god, Splatoon's, like, the greatest thing ever. They all said that's, like, their favorite thing from the... I was just... It's not that big a deal. Just cool off just a little bit about it. But, um... I thought it was a really cool concept. I find it really interesting that Nintendo themselves is making it. I thought it was more of a third-party thing. But it sure seems like they're making it themselves. At least in their own circles or whatever. So that's kind of interesting. Um... I like the idea behind it. I, I like how it looks, like how it plays. It reminds me a lot of um, Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare on Xbox One. And so if the Wii U can get something kind of like that to fill that gap, because that looks like a cool thing, and I was like, damn, I kind of want an Xbox One. But if Splatoon can sort of take the place of that for me, then that'll be cool. So I think it can. Um... We have Bayonetta 2, which they showed a lot of. I saw a lot of footage. A lot of cool gameplay. Um, so I'm really excited about that one now, especially since they announced that Bayonetta 1 is going to be bundled with Bayonetta 2 for Wii U. So they're remastering, remaking, whatever you want to call it, the first one. And you're going to get, get that too. And that's... That makes it a little more appealing for someone like me who never played the first Bayonetta. I was when I got a Wii U, I'm like, oh, they're this Nintendo's deciding to publish this game. Well, it looks kinda cool. I've just never heard of it before. But um 
but they're re-releasing the first one. And you'll have it when you get the second one. And on top of that, the first Bayonetta, like a lot of other games that have come out on the Wii U, it's going to get like um, Nintendo-style content. There were three costumes that were shown off. Uh, there was a Princess Peach costume for Bayonetta, there was a Link costume for Bayonetta, and a Samus one. And so that was all really cool. They were showing the cinematics and stuff within Bayonetta 1 where you have the Samus outfit on, and while the cinematic is going, you can choose whether she has the visor up or down, and it, it was it's hilarious, the possibilities that you can do with that. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I really love when... I really love Nintendo putting like all of this stuff in like the third party games and stuff. It's I love it so much. And so to see more of it is just fantastic. That's like all I need to convince me to get a game. Um Hyrule Warriors. Oh my god. <laughs> it is I need to spend an entire an entirely different video on Hyrule Warriors because there is so much to talk about. And I just love every single thing about the game. It's just a love letter from Tecmo Koe to Legend of Zelda. And it's just brilliant, everything they're doing, all the references they're making, all the little tiny things they're putting in, and all the big improvements they're making. Just watching that game devol evolve, and to think that we're, it'll it's coming in September. It's like right around the corner. So I cannot wait for that. I will spend an entirely different video talking about that and why it is my most anticipated Wii U title. Possibly my most anticipated game, like, ever. <laughs> but, um, it's it's great for me because I, I used to play Dynasty Warriors games with my brother. We had a lot of fun with Dynasty Warriors 4 on PS2 and Dynasty Warriors 6 on the PS3. A lot of fun. And so, um, Alright, next thing. Captain Toad Treasure Tracker looks interesting. Um, they were making a lot of references to Super Mario 3D World and 3D Land? Maybe just 3D World. But um, I haven't played those yet. I kind of want to play 3D World. Um, so, I, I've, I, I've because I haven't played those, I kind of felt that this came more out of the blue than some other people might think, but, uh, I um, I don't know, um, a, a, a weird thing about some of these titles they announce is that I don't, I don't know if I can really picture a lot of them being, like, full $60 games. Like, Captain Toad, I can't really see that on a shelf as, like, a full $60 game. And I can't really see Splatoon as one. I really hope that's, like, some $15, $20 game on the eShop or something that I can get. I... I don't think I would spend $60 on those things. I really hope they don't make us do that, because they're great ideas and all, they look great, they look fun, but I I have so many other things to focus on. <laughs> but, um, all right, and Mario Party 10 is the next thing. Um, I'm a decent fan of the Mario Party franchise. Uh, my friends and I have a lot of fun with Mario Party 8 on the Wii. I think that's the best Mario Party. Um, my second favorite would be Mario Party 2 on the Nintendo 64, which I really liked, but the motion control of 8 just made everything so much better. Um, I never got Mario Party 9 because they showed the whole new idea where they put them all in like one cart and they ride around the track, and I, I just didn't really get it. I didn't understand it. I just backed away from it. And was like, whoa, what are you doing? Um, in Mario Party 10, they've made it make a little more sense um, by having this like Bowser Party mode where you have a fifth player controlling Bowser and then all the other players are in one cart trying to get away from him. That made a little more sense to me. I was like, okay, I could understand that. Um, they also had a regular party mode, which we didn't get to see a whole lot of. Maybe they showed it more on the first day and I missed it. But, um, every time they went into it, they just did, like, the rides thing where they have to jump up and down to get coins or stars or whatever. And, um, I just really hope that they return to, like, the traditional Mario Party format where everyone's in their own place on the board, because I'm just really unsure about the whole cart thing. But 
it, it looks good for now. I'm kind of excited for it. Um, I'm sure my friends will be happy to know that there's another one I want to get. But, um, we'll see. Uh, Yoshi's Woolly World. Um, I heard about, like, a Yarn Yoshi thing a while back, and never played Kirby's Epic Yarn, because Kirby's not really my thing. Um, neither is Yoshi, really, but, um, I sort of like the game mechanics they showed here, like, the co-op play, the whole yarn aesthetic reminds me a bit of, like, Little Big Planet, and I really enjoyed those games. Um, so, but again, I can't, I can sort of see that as a $60 game, but not completely. So if it would be like maybe half that, like $30 or so, I might get it, but I don't know. Um, they showed a bit of Mario Maker yesterday, which I think is really cool. Uh, and it had better not be a full $60 thing, that would be ridiculous. I could see it being like $10 or something. Um, but it looks really cool. Um, in the first trailer I saw for it, or whatever, on a, in the digital event, I think it was, I think they showed one more setting uh, than they showed in the Treehouse sessions. Because when they did the demo I saw in, in the Treehouse, um, you could only switch between like the original retro Super Mario Brothers and new Super Mario Brothers U. But I could have sworn there was one more setting in between those when they showed it in the digital event. I'm not sure. I might have to go back and double check, but I I just could have sworn. But um, it looks cool. I could see myself having a ton of fun with that. Um, and yeah. Uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X. Um, I believe that's that code name X or whatever that they had going for a while, and they finally revealed what that was. Correct me if I'm wrong, somebody. I'm not the most knowledgeable person, but um, uh, it looks pretty cool. If that's the open world thing I was thinking of and all, um, I didn't get to see a whole lot of that. I know they did like a 40 minute long footage thing, like the first day of E3, and I have it in my watch later thing on YouTube. But I just haven't looked at it yet. I'll probably watch it like right after I put this video up. But um, I'm excited for that too. Uh, the Wii U really, it it seemed, it seemed like it was really a big deal and really wide open and everything. And the Wii U really needs titles like that. And it's good that they're coming. There's a lot to look forward to. Um, I'm not I'm not really sure what to think of Sonic Boom. Um, I'm not the biggest Sonic fan. I hardly know anything about what's going on in there. If this... I didn't understand, like, their altered appearances and everything. Why Sonic has, like, a brown bandana now. Why Knuckles is, like... I, I, I don't... I didn't know what was going on. I felt like I missed something. Um, if this is, like, kickstarting some new series or something, someone, someone can inform inform me on this, like, backstage, but I'm just not sure what to think of it yet. Um, Gameplay-wise, I thought the graphics of Sonic Boom looked terrible. Maybe that's just me, but... Maybe it's just in, like, an early stage or something, but I don't, I don't think it looked very good graphically. But, um, I don't know. Um, another controversial one, Devil's Third. Um... Again, I feel like this is part of a series that I never heard of before. I feel like it's the third game in the series. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't do my research. I'm just making observations. Um, but um, it was I. I initially watched a trailer on YouTube that um, Nintendo themselves uploaded, and. Um, there was a lot of controversy in the comments. It's like, are people really going... Are Wii U players really going to buy this? Like, what's the appeal of it in that community and everything? I wasn't sure myself. The gameplay looked a little cheap and and dated. and I, I just wasn't really sure. But in the Treehouse today, they did a huge reveal for the multiplayer of Devil's Third. And that looks 
absolutely amazing. You can customize your soldier. You can customize maps. They have like a map maker within it. You're like making your own base. It's like Call of Duty Ghosts on steroids. And um, and they have crazy modes involving chickens and melons and fruit. And I didn't know half of what I saw. But see if you can find that somewhere. Because it was some pretty awesome stuff. And before I was just like... Before I saw the multiplayer stuff, I was just like, hell no, I'm not getting this game. It's not for me. But then I saw the multiplayer, and then I'm like, well, crap. <laughs> I got another thing I have to spend $60 on. Um, it's It looks really hard to pass up. It does. Um, it, it looks like it could be really fun. And they did, they did a campaign um, gameplay session, too. And... From there, the gameplay looked a little more solid than it did in the trailers, so I felt a little better about the game as a whole, but the campaign itself just seems like a big testosterone fest, and it's a little out of my area. I mean, there were some cool elements about it, sure, but it didn't look like it was really deep or anything um, like the multiplayer was. But um, I think I will pick that game up. The multiplayer made it really hard to refuse. I just hope there will be enough people on it. I mean, Call of Duty Ghosts gets like 400 people now a day, which is really bad. <laughs> so, uh, we'll see. Um, a little on uh, Disney Infinity. Um, I've wanted the first one for the longest time, and now I'm a little confused about this 2.0 edition. Um, it's apparently an entirely different game. Like, you'd have to buy a separate disc for it. But the original Disney Infinity figures will still work. That's what I've heard. Um, so, they're starting off Disney Infinity 2.0 with uh, the Marvel superheroes. And I was like, okay, that's a big enough edition to make a different game. I can understand that. And then they've returned to putting in, like, traditional Disney characters. They have, um, Maleficent now, and, uh, Merida from Brave. And so, it's sort of like returning to elements after the Marvel superheroes thing, but they had the Avengers, they had Guardians of the Galaxy. I saw Rocket Raccoon at the beginning of, at the end of the Marvel superheroes trailer for it, so, um, I, I guess now it just depends on, like, what, um, what sandboxes you start out with. Um, cause like in, uh, in the original one you start out with Pirates of the Caribbean, Incredibles, and Monsters University. And so I'm, I'm sort of waiting to see what the second one offers now. I'm assuming with the giant Marvel superheroes reveal there's going to be an Avengers one. That's what I'm assuming. Um... They haven't really revealed many other characters. I'd say maybe Maleficent. Um, I don't know if Brave was really big enough. They could be trying to milk it for all it's worth. But uh, I, I don't know what those other sandboxes could be. Those other starting places to work with. But um, overall, I really like the idea of Disney Infinity. And, um, and uh, I probably should have brought this up closer to when I was talking about Smash Brothers, but Disney Infinity reminds me of uh, the whole Amiibo announcement, where they're going to have the figures um, that work with games like Super Smash Brothers, backwards compatible with Mario Kart 8, will work with Mar uh, Mario Party 10, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, um, so that's pretty cool, and they're going to like carry stats with them through the games and everything, so I'm, I'm sort of interested to see just like how extensive the compatibility is. I mean, does this mean we're going to have, like, Fox and Link in Mario Kart 8? Or, like... I, I'm i I'm curious to see what this means. But, um... As far as I know, and as far as everyone else knows, um, the figures can carry their own stats and customization and everything like that, so no two figures will really be the same. But, um... So that's cool. It's a really cool idea. It's making it more like Skylanders and Disney Infinity, but you're not just using the figure for one game, depending on what kind of figure you get. But um, I know 
I know one thing. I'm I'm already counting down the ones I'm going to try and get. I I know I want a Fox McCloud figure. <laughs> I know I want a Link figure because back in like Ocarina of Time days, I tried to order a Link figure and they were sold out, and I was heartbroken. I had to settle for Ganondorf and the soundtrack. But um, <laughs> so I'm going to try and get that. Um, I kind of want a Bowser one. I feel like he could be compatible with a lot of different games: Super Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, and we can. So I can do a bunch of different stuff with him, and then maybe get, like, Roy for Mario Kart 8. I I can't imagine what else he would be in. But um, I'm really liking that character. Um, a lot of my top races, um, both online and offline, are with Roy in Mario Kart 8, so... I think it would be cool to get him. Uh, let's see. Um... Mario vs. Donkey Kong come to the console. I've heard about these games in the past. They look kind of cool. Um, the Wii U version, it just sort of looks like a port of one. It doesn't really look that impressive graphically. It just it still looks like a portable game, and it doesn't even take up like all of the screen when you're playing on it. So it's really... I don't know. I don't... If if I do want to plunge into the series, I'm not sure if this is the one I will get, but uh, we'll see. Um, Kirby and the Rainbow Curse. Um, I saw a little bit about it, possibly just the trailer and a little bit more gameplay, but um, I like the aesthetic of it, the whole clay thing. It makes sense. Um... I like all the different things they're trying with Kirby. They had the epic yarn, and now they're doing clay stuff. I I think that's really cool. Kirby is just not my thing. I don't understand the appeal of it for someone like me. I I just don't. I I just don't know about ever plunging into the Kirby series. I I don't see what I can take away from it. But um, I think that looks really cool for other people. Other people might enjoy that. Um, and there's a brief Watch Dogs trailer in here, which leads me to believe that we will be getting Watch Dogs for the Wii U, which is cool. Um, that game looks pretty interesting. Um, along the lines of Ubisoft, um, with some birthday money, I recently got uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag for the Wii U, which, uh, has been pretty fun. Been playing a lot of that and having a good time. Um, just having, like, real open-world hardcore stuff like that on the Wii U is a delight. It's really great. And I've been a fan of Assassin's Creed for a long time, and I'm I'm glad that I, I picked this one up and that it's available on the system that I have and that I can play on whenever I please. And, uh... Watch Dogs is another open world thing, and um, I think it could sort of make up for us not getting like Grand Theft Auto and stuff. Not that I really want Grand Theft Auto, but I mean, it's that kind of game. And so I, I feel like it fills a hole that needed to be filled. And so it's good that we're getting that. And I'm, I just want to briefly thank Ubisoft for just loving Nintendo so much and just constantly giving us support with great games like Zombie U, Assassin's Creed and now Watch Dogs coming to Wii U and they're decent ports and I feel like we're getting a lot of the content with like Uplay and stuff like that I feel like we're we're being appreciated by Ubisoft I, I feel like Ubisoft appreciates their fans that are on Nintendo consoles and that can't be said for a lot of third party publishers and developers these days. <laughs> cough Activision cough. But um Alright. That's all for Wii U. I think there were some 3DS ones. Um Um, they showed a bit of Omega Ruby and uh, Alpha Sapphire, um, the remakes of Ruby and Sapphire that were originally on Game Boy Advance. Um, I sort of care about this because Ruby and Sapphire was the last Pokemon series that I actually picked up, um, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, I, I was kind of waiting to see what they would do with it, whether they put in X and Y's, like, new 3D combat system, and they did. It's in there. They showed it. 
and the mega evolutions and everything seem to be there too. Um, so I was think I a while back I was thinking like if they were gonna add that stuff I was going to pick it up, but then I realized it's like if I was waiting for that, why don't I just pick up X and Y? And they'd be the same thing and and new. But um so I'm a little torn about what I'm gonna do. I might actually pick up a Pokemon game again. Um We'll find out. Um <laughs> Yeah. Uh there's another Sonic Boom. Someone will have to correct this for for me. I saw two different titles. I saw Rise of Lyric which I believe is the Wii U version of Sonic Boom, and then I saw Shattered Crystals, which I believe is the 3DS version. Um, and at the end of each trailer, they're like, for like the Wii U trailer, they'd be like, continue the story on 3DS, and for 3DS, it'd be like, continue the story on Wii U, so it's like, which one is tying into the other? I'm just really confused by the whole thing. <laughs> I still haven't picked up Sonic Lost World, and I mean to, and... There's probably a tie in there that'll help me understand things. I don't know. I don't know very much about Sonic. Um, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. Um, it's it's looking cool and all. It's looked cool from the beginning. I'm just I'm just really bugged by the fact that we have seen no Wii U footage of the game. There's been no announcement of it coming to the Wii U. And I just really loved what 3 Ultimate did with, like, having your data back and forth between the Wii U and the 3DS so it could be at home on a big TV or you could take it on the go. And personally, I think Monster Hunter is, like, the best game possible on a portable console. I, I think it's a wonderful experience playing Monster Hunter on 3DS. And, um... A lot of people don't like the controls and stuff. It's probably because you have a 3DS XL and no Circle Pad Pro. I have a regular 3DS and a Circle Pad Pro, and the controls are great. I love it so much. Um, Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate is like one of my favorite games now. And um, but um, and as far as I know, they they are going to put full online play on the 3DS version of Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. So whether we get the Wii U version or not, you'll still be able... You'll get the full experience still, but I still feel like we're missing a lot by not getting, like, an HD version of it. And I'm wondering if, like, something went wrong with Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate on the Wii U. I, I thought it was okay. I, were there bad sales or something? And they were convinced to just stick with the 3DS version. I mean, I know the 3DS version as a whole is doing better, but, um, but, I mean, Wii U sales have gone up, like, more than 600% since Mario Kart 8 came out. And, me, I was a little smarter. I picked one up before because I knew the game was coming. It's like, I don't get why so many people waited if they knew the game was coming and they saw the trailers and they knew it looked awesome. It's like, what were they waiting for? But, um, I'm, I, I kind of want the Wii U version. I'm just wondering what's going on there. Uh, and before I forget, I'm delving into the 3DS stuff when I didn't finish with the Wii U stuff. I was pissed about the Zelda reveal. So pissed. Because it is the second time that Nintendo has shown off a realistic, more Twilight Princess-looking Legend of Zelda game at the first reveal of the system, and then they change it to a cel-shaded thing. Last time was for the GameCube, and they showed us a Twilight Princess Type 1 initially, and then what did we get after that? We got Wind Waker, which is a good game in its own right. I just don't like being misleaded, and I hate the fact that Nintendo insists on keeping the cel-shaded Zelda look when, in my opinion, it really needs the dark, realistic, Lord of the Rings type feel that Twilight Princess had. And on the darker side, things like Majora's Mask had. They keep doing these bright, vibrant, cel-shaded, cartoony Legend of Zelda games. And this new one looked just like that, too. It lo the, the look of it looked no different than Skyward Sword. And 
so many are, people are telling me, well, they keep trying new different looks and everything. It's the same look over and over. They're not trying new things. They're not innovate. They're not innovating or experimenting. They're just keeping the same thing over and over. And I'm really sick of it. And with HD stuff, you choose to keep with the cartoony stuff when you can finally pull off like the realistic look it's just I was really annoyed by it and honestly I, I think I'm done with Zelda in the main series because I tried picking up Skyward Sword and just had no interest in playing it whatsoever I I just couldn't I just couldn't find a day where I was like, you know what, I want to play Skyward Sword over all the other games that I have. And I'm not interested in A Link Between Worlds, just not interested in the over-the-top view Legend of Zelda games at all. Played Oracle of Seasons a while back on the Game Boy Color, and it was terrible. I hated it. Um, I still like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask... Wind Waker, and Twilight Princess. Those are my four Legend of Zeldas that I'll play forever. And Twilight Princess is hands down my favorite Legend of Zelda of all time. I, I just don't see how it can be beaten by anything. And maybe since I've had what I think is the ultimate Legend of Zelda, I don't think I can ever be pleased again. But um, I'm, I'm really excited for Hyrule Warriors because it's doing what the new Zelda isn't and by doing the more realistic rough stuff and it's and I know it's more like a love letter to the Zelda series as a whole but I've seen a lot of Twilight Princess influence in it too you can play as Midna there's a whole level in it where you're attacking the Twilight Palace and it just looked amazing I feel like they're focusing more on that side of Zelda just like Nintendo themselves should be doing, but they're not. And so, and so, I'm I'm torn. I'm I'm not sure what I'm. I'm not sure what I'm going to do there. And now I'm reminded. I completely forgot about this. But um, on the flip side, <laughs> I'm going to do a horrible segue into something entirely positive, or mostly positive. But we are getting a Star Fox game on the Wii U. It has been confirmed twice. In the last seconds of the digital event, Shigeru Miyamoto comes up and he's playing something on his TV using the gamepad, and it is clearly Star Fox. You see the ship, and you see the. It was Star Fox. And then he confirmed it in a video later that Nintendo uploaded directly to YouTube, um, where he was showing his other projects. He was showing Project Giant Robot, which looks good as well. I forgot to talk about that. Um, Project Guard, which looks, eh. and then he, and then in just like the last few seconds, he spent like the least amount of time on this ever. He was like, "Oh, I'm also working on Star Fox," but it's there. It has been confirmed. It was revealed like behind closed doors. It wasn't playable at E3, but he confirmed it. So we are getting that. The problem I had with it is, from what I saw, it looked a lot like just like an HD version of Star Fox 64. I mean, the terrain and stuff looked a lot like it. Um, you could see Peppy's icon in one part of the screen, and it looked exactly like his one from 64 3D. And um, so I'm kind of worried about that. I also don't want a Star Fox game that is just a flying rail shooter. Um, unlike... I'm probably a contra contrarian to like all the other Star Fox fans out there, but I don't want just that. I believe as a gaming industry, we're past the point where a simple rail shooter like that can be a full $60 game. And I don't want a cheap Star Fox game that's just $10, $15, no. That's, that's not how it needs to come back. So, um, that's my rant on Zelda and Star Fox there. Sorry about that. Um, let's see if there's anything else here. Um, 
I've heard tiny little things about fantasy life. People are making sort of a big deal about it. I haven't looked at anything about that yet. So, Fossil Fighters looked okay. I remember one from the DS that I was kind of like, huh, that game looks kind of cool. And so, to see that coming on 3DS, graphics were kind of... Uh, they were showing like you in like, Jeeps and things, and that looked terrible. But when they were showing like the actual fights, the graphics looked good. So, um, I'm not sure what to do there. Uh... All right. Let me check. All right, that's all that I got from there. Let me check my list in here. Uh, what the hell? Oh! Yes, okay. Alright, one more. Codename Steam, which I had heard about before, but I just saw gameplay of it in the Treehouse sessions today. And, um, it is turn-based fighting game, well, not fighting game, turn-based strategy game. Um, not in the way you might think, it's more of like... It's a little closer to a third-person shooter than a turn-based strategy game, but it still has those elements, and it looked pretty cool. It's uh, it's steampunk-themed, as the name kind of implies. Um, they had some colorful characters being used. Um, they had this one character, uh, the fox, who was a female sniper, who whose sniper rifle is like in the shape of a fox, and it's like best gun ever. So, that looked kind of interesting. Um, so, there's... Overall, there's a bit to look forward to for me on 3DS. Um, I actually haven't been using my 3DS a whole lot. I played a bit of Mario Kart 7 the other day, just to compare like the stages that are in 8 and things like that. Um, but, uh... I'm, I'm definitely going to pick up Smash Brothers and Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate, and those two things will definitely keep me entertained on 3DS for a while. And I may pick up Pokemon X or Omega Ruby, and um, and I may get this codename Steam. And so that's something there. But my main focus is on the Wii U. Um, I still really like it as a system. Um. It's, but yeah, it's just ever since Mario Kart 8 come out, came out, it's like new life has been breathed into it, and there's just, I think Nintendo did a pretty awesome job overall at E3. Um, I was satisfied with what I saw. I cannot wait for half of the games, at least, that they showed, and so I'm super excited, and I hope you guys are too. Um... Please uh, like, subscribe, let me know in the comments what you thought of some things at E3, what you liked, what you didn't. I will respond to you. Um, I will be sure to do some other videos about uh, non-Nintendo stuff at E3. I do know a little bit. Uh, I believe I can make a short little video on it. Um, and I also want to do an entirely different video, like I said, about Hyrule Warriors and why that is my most anticipated game for the Wii U. Or just in general. Uh, but, alright, that's it for now, and I will see you later. Bye.